In this video, I'm going to talk about the relationship between the symmetries of a function and the and a zero coefficients in its Fourier series. So to work with a specific example, I'm going to use f of x equal 1 over 1 plus x, and I'm going to enforce that this is defined only on the interval 0 to l. Outside of the, zero, the interval 0 to l, f of x is not defined. So what we'd like to do, and this is motivated by what we'll need to do when we start solving partial differential equations, in particular the diffusion equation, with specific boundary conditions. So what I'd like to do first is I'd like to figure out how to write down a Fourier series that converges to f of x on the open interval 0 to l. And the reason for this is that I can't be sure about the endpoints uh, because of continuity, but that'll be okay for PDEs as well. Not only that, but I want to make sure that this Fourier series consists only of terms that have the form cosine n pi x over 2l with n odd. So that means no sine terms involved and no cosine terms that have an even n value. Moreover, we want to have uh, 2l in the denominator. So this will eventually be useful for um, the diffusion equation when we have mixed boundary conditions, having a Neumann boundary condition at zero and a Dirichlet boundary condition at L. So why is this going to be useful for that kind of uh, set of boundary conditions? Well, notice that the cosine function always has a zero slope at the origin. And if we choose n equal 1, then we see, and this is l here, we can see that we get a 0 slope initially, and this will come down to 0 at this point because we have a quarter period. That is, if I plug in l here, I get n is 1, so I get pi over 2. Pi over 2 is 1 quarter of the cosine function's period, and so we get to 0. So we have a 0 slope here and a 0 value here. If I go to n equal 3, then I have a function that comes down and hits 0 earlier and then returns and comes up to 0. And so this is the cosine of 3 pi x over 2l. And I can keep doing this for higher odd integers n. And for each one of them, I end up getting a 0 slope at the origin and a 0 value at l. Now recall that Fourier series, the Fourier series coefficients in general are given by uh, a n is 1 over q, integral from minus q to q, uh, f of x cosine n pi x over q. And here I'm using q instead of l because in general, when is this the Fourier series? It would be when our function has been defined from minus q to q and is periodic with period 2q. And so we only have so far a function defined from 0 to l. We have to decide, first of all, do we want to choose l equal q? And given that I'm setting my goal to use a 2L in the denominator, it doesn't seem like Q should be L, it seems like Q should be 2L. What that means is we're going to have to extend this function quite a bit. We need to figure out what it is all the way up to 2L, and so this Q will be a 2L, and we also have to reflect it somehow down here to go all the way down to minus 2L. And then the BN terms will be 1 over Q integral from minus Q to Q f of x sine n pi x over q. Now what we're going to do is we're going to extend it beyond 0 to l in a clever way or clever ways so that the sine terms have 0 coefficient and so that the cosine terms are 0 whenever n is even. So let me just modify my notation here. First, I'm going to make it explicit that f is not the same function as above. It's an extended version that's now going to be defined all the way from minus q to q. And we should state explicitly at this point that we're going to choose q equal to 2l. 
because our goal is to represent the Fourier series or represent the function with the Fourier series in terms of functions of the form cosine n pi x over 2l. How do we ensure then by making these extensions that our coefficients, the bn coefficients will be zero and the a sub even n coefficients will also be zero. So let's talk about the bn first. The trick is to extend the function f beyond zero to l in such a way uh, as to force the integrals to become zero. So this is our original function f of x defined from zero to l. And so you'll notice if we define, oops, if we define the extended function to be an even function across the origin, like this, then the integral from minus L, where well, eventually it'll be 2L, but for now let's just say minus L to L of this extended function. Now this part of it is even, but when we multiply it by an odd function, the product of an even function and an odd function will be an odd function, and an odd function integrated symmetrically about the origin will give us zero. So as soon as we extend this as an even function, we know that the bn's will be equal to zero. Now we wanted to define this function all the way up to 2l because our integral goes that far. And so we have to figure out how do we extend in both directions here. And we have to go in both directions because we want to make sure that it's even about the origin, but we also want to make sure that it uh, is symmetric in some way about L so that the even valued a n coefficients are zero. So it'll turn out that what we want to do, and I'll discuss this more in a few minutes here, is we want to extend it in an odd manner. And when I say odd, I don't mean odd about the origin, I mean odd about x equal l. And when I do that, what we'll end up getting here is a function whose Fourier series from minus 2l to 2l has exactly the features I want. So let's switch over to a Desmos demo. <clears throat> what you see here is I've chosen L to be 5, and you can see 2L goes all the way up to 10. Here is my 1 over 1 plus x function, and that's this guy here, defined only from 0 to 5. And now I'm going to put in the cosine functions. Now I want to make sure that the product of my f extended with this blue function here, which is the cosine function, and I'll start off with n equal 1. I want to make sure that product is not 0, but the integral of this product is 0. So let's draw what the extended function that I'm proposing is, which is to reflect it as an even function about the origin and then as an odd function about 5, but then when I check to make sure we're even all the way across the whole interval, I have to add in another piece that's odd about x equal minus 5. Now if I try and find a Fourier series for this guy, the coefficients will be defined by, by taking the product of g of x, the red curve, with cosine n pi x over 2l, the blue curve, and I'll take that product and show it here in purple. So what you see here is that when n is equal to 1, the integral from 0 to 5 is just the area under the purple curve. But you'll notice that in all of these other intervals, from 5 to 10 and 0 to minus 5 and minus 10 to minus 5, the area under each part of this curve is exactly the same because the shape of the product of those two functions is exactly the same. What that means is that I can just restrict myself to calculating the integral from 0 to L and multiply it by 4. So let's write that down. 
we now have that a n is equal to, instead of 1 over q, we have 4 over, and now q is 2l. So I'll replace it there. And now I'm going to go from 0 to l only of, and I no longer have to talk about the extended function. I can just write f of x because it's the same all from 0 to l. Cosine n pi x over 2l dx. And this will give me a non-zero value, and it'll be the correct coefficient when n is odd. Now that worked for n equal 1, and let's just see what happens when n is equal to 3 or 5. So we can jump up 2 here, and again we see the same thing. We see the curve, the purple curve from 0 to 5 looks like this, and it looks exactly the same shape, it's just reflected or shifted, but the areas will be the same in all four parts. And so we can always, for any odd n, we can always write a n as four times the integral from 0 to l. Now what happens for the even n's? At the even n's, the purple curve is no longer quite so simple. Here you can see from 0 to l, it's a curve like this. And then from l to 2l, it's actually kind of opposite in the sense that wherever you had negative area, there's now positive area. Wherever you had positive area, there's now negative area. So the integral from 0 to 10 will come out to 0 because both of these will all balance. Same thing from minus 10 to 0. And that will be true for all odd n, or sorry, all even n values. Here it is again, that purple curve. It looks exactly the same, but flipped. And then here's the original one from 0 to L, but reflected. And then here it is again, flipped. So the area under the purple curve in all these cases will add up to 0. So that means that we can say, finally down here, a n is equal to 0 when n is even which is exactly what we wanted.